hunger is one of the greatest problems of our time. And as a kid, I wasn't exempted from this problem. I grew up in a small rural farming community like this one, a village in one of the smallest countries in Africa. Just a quick show of hands, how many of you have heard of this country before? The Gambia. Like 2%. <laughs> the Gambia is a small country in West Africa of about 1.9 million people. And between 70 to 80% 80, 80 of the population work in the agriculture sector. These are smallholder farmers. They live mostly in rural areas and semi-urban areas. They grow crops and rare animals. My father is one of these many farmers. He grows millet, rice, and peanuts. And most of the farming is very manual. It's not mechanized. It means we put a lot of time and effort into these farms, but at the end of the day, we get very little. And in a big family like mine, where a steady flow of food is important and so everyone is well-fed and happy, this can sometimes be a problem. And I can remember about over two decades ago, when I was a kid, the times when adult members of the family have to skip meals in order for the children to eat, because there's not just enough food for everyone. You see, my story and the story of my family is not entirely unique, in the sense that there are a lot of people all over the world that suffer from the problem of hunger. Every day, one out of every nine people go to bed hungry every night. This is more than two times the population of the United States. And most of these are children, which is why every 10 seconds of every day, a child dies of hunger and malnutrition-related complications. You see, when children are affected, it's not just their bodies that are affected. Not, they don't just suffer from things like stunting, as you can see in this picture. But their mental development is also affected. And as a result, these children tend to perform very poorly in schools, and they have a higher chance of dropping out of school. And what this does is it perpetuates the cycle of hunger and extreme poverty in the communities that these children find themselves. I often ask myself the question, why do we still have hunger in the 21st century? You see, hunger has been with us for thousands of years, but we're not able to eradicate it. At least we're working towards eradicating it. It turns out that it's a very complicated problem. Because the causes of hunger, they range from wars and political instability that stop people from engaging in income-generating activities, to unemployment, poverty, to natural disasters that displaces people from their homes. You might be surprised to hear that we produce enough food to feed the over 7 billion people on our planet. But some of our major challenges are Issues of access, distribution, and storage. For instance, I took this picture in the West African country of Senegal in 2016. These tomatoes were brought to the local weekly market called Lumo. And the farmer that brought these tomatoes will not be able to sell these tomatoes, all of these tomatoes that same day. So what will happen is the farmer will go home with these tomatoes, and they'll probably get rotten because there's no electricity or storage in the village which is a huge loss for a poor rural farmer. Now, this is the same story with every other food produce. We're aware of the magnitude of this problem. That's why governments, nonprofit organizations, individuals, and private foundations are all working really hard to tackle this problem. A good example of this is UN Sustainable Development Goals. And number two on this list is zero hunger. And this shows you the magnitude of this problem, how serious this problem is. The goal is to eradicate hunger by the year 2030. And these world leaders, really smart people, they realize that one of the ways that we can end global hunger is by empowering small-scale food producers, smallholder farmers in developing countries. Because the unfortunate truth is that most of the people that suffer from hunger, hunger and malnutrition globally live in developing countries. So it totally makes sense, empowering these smallholder farmers, because doing so will not only help them produce a lot more food, but they can produce food that can be exported to other countries, which will bring food prices in those countries and make food 
a lot more accessible to people. In solving a complicated problem like hunger, we need to approach it like a jigsaw puzzle that is solving one piece at a time. I realized very early that one of the root causes of hunger in my community, in the Gambia, is that these farmers are so poor and that they cannot afford basic necessities like seeds and the, small, the tools that they need to be able to grow more food. So I set out to solve this problem. I started a nonprofit organization called Rural Impact to empower these farmers by providing them with seeds, with the simple tools that they need to be able to grow crop, and also holding community events to raise awareness about hunger. Most of the people that I work with are women. That is because in the Gambia, we have communal gardens called NACOs, where each woman will have one or two beds where they'll grow vegetables like tomatoes, carrots, and onions. They use this to sup supplement the household food supply income by selling some of it at the local market. But compared to the male counterpart, these women have difficulties accessing resources. And the FAO estimates that we can reduce global hunger by 150 million people if we can give these, these women more access to resources like their male counterparts. In solving complicated problems like hunger, we require individuals taking actions at the communal level. Now I was inspired to start Rural Impact and empower farmers in my community because of my experiences growing up in the village and a desire to help contribute to my community. I'm a great believer in the human potential. I believe that every individual has the potential to make a difference. So I don't know what you're interested in or what your passion is, but one thing I can tell you is that do not underestimate the impact that you can make in this world. The small efforts that we make, like donating to our favorite charity, like volunteering at a nonprofit organization, these things add up. And when they add up, they can result in significant changes that will impact the lives of people, not just in our local communities, but all across the world. Thank you for your attention.